Have you ever grown your beard uh, longer than that, or is this uh, like the most? I can't, dude. This is my um, this is the my maximum growth. Oh. Yeah. Well, don't feel too bad about it, because I I tried that for about six months, and all I grew was this. This thing decided to come out. Yeah. Right. This thing was about skin color, so no one saw it, and there was nothing in between. So, people locked up their kids when I was around. Patchy growth. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's not something we should celebrate, though. It's really? really a serious matter. Don't worry, man. As Nelly says, you know, everyone was rocking the braids, so I switched to the fades. Now they're going back to the fades, so I'm rocking the braids. <laughs> <laughs> when did he say that? <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm not Nelly. It's not, not, it's not, the, it's not the coolest hip hopper to um, reference, really, is it, Nelly? There can be, there's I, I should have just made up another rapper that said that. Just, yeah. Some obscure rapper that yeah. no one's heard. Yeah. Underground. <laughs> Needless to say, we're, we're all good. <laughs> we are? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's good stuff, though. I'm definitely going to that. <laughs> Tom Hearn, I was a bit disappointed that we weren't able to get you uh, straight after the awards, after you won so many. However, you did gift us this, and so now you're my best friend. And this episode <laughs> is probably brought to you by The Dark Horse, which is coming out, which is out on DVD, which you can buy from your local retailers. All right, sweet, as long as it's not brought to you by Tullamore Jew. <laughs> because uh, I don't think that would be allowed. No, no, we can cut that. I'll blur that out. Thanks, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so what got you into producing as opposed to writing or directing? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, to be completely honest, when I started out producing, um, I was still acting, and um, my thinking was that I would be able to create work for myself as an actor. Um, so that was the initial kind of uh, motivation but that quite quickly shifted into um, you know, realizing that I had something to offer in that role and yeah, wanting to shift my target really. So um, yeah, I started focusing on producing more than the acting side. Are you still tempted to sort of like slip yourself into an acting role? Um, not so much on the films that I'm producing myself. I sort of dabbled with that on our first film, I'm Not Harry Jensen. I yeah. acted in that as well. Um, and it was a nightmare, uh, yeah, trying to juggle the two, you know, it's literally like, you know, um, signing checks and, and, and balancing the books right before um, James calls action and, you know, I'm supposed to be acting. Yeah. You know, the other sort of weird thing about acting is, um, you know, I think any actor would be lying if, if they said that they weren't insecure. Um, <laughs> and so there's a whole lot of sort of insecurity and self-doubt to, um, to struggle with, which is, are not good qualities to be um, carrying as a, as a producer. So they were kind of in, in conflict for me. <laughs> Even now, I've done a couple of acting gigs recently. I, um, last year I did a commercial with um, Pamela Anderson. Oh. And um, it had been a long time since I'd been on set uh, as an actor and straight away man as soon as I got on there as an actor you know really sort of insecure is it going okay are you happy with it um, you know is there anything I can adjust so uh, uh, yeah I'm quite happy to uh, let that side sort of chill out a bit okay so if you were to teach producing would the first lesson be don't be insecure <laughs> <laughs> nah I don't think that would be the first lesson. I think the first lesson, um, not that I feel qualified to be a teacher, to be honest, but um, the first thing for me would be uh, that it comes down to story first and foremost, you know, and the, the story is the most important thing. Um, and that's always been the sort of filter that I apply to projects when I'm looking at um, getting involved in them. Were you ever tempted to write or direct your own stories? Or are you tempted now? Yeah, um, I guess um, at some stage in the future I'd be interested in um, directing something myself, but the way what I bring to the process as a producer is very much a creative kind of partnership with the writers and directors that I work with. And what I love about it is, you know, at the moment I've got say five or six different projects and so often in a week um, on any given day I could be working on five or six different scripts. Uh, it's still a very creatively rewarding process. Um, so I feel quite satisfied um, producing uh, currently. It's, it's what I love. What filmmakers do you admire? 
Wow, yeah, there's there's a bunch. I mean, I guess um, coming up as a producer, I've always really admired uh, Christine Vachon from Killer Films. She's always been like a hero to me. Um, Ted Hope, um, a bunch of those uh, indie producers. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a heap of directors that I love as well. Um, uh, I'm a, I've got to admit, I'm a bit of a Lars von Trier fan. <laughs> Always a polarizing um, statement to make. Um, it's mutual. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. But there's, you know, I've got funny taste because I guess, you know, I've always been most into art house drama or drama across the board. But my second favorite genre is actually um, goofy sports comedy. Uh, so I love all of the kind of Will Ferrell, Judd Apatow uh, stuff. It seems like something that New Zealand desperately needs more of. Yeah. It's surprising that we haven't got more sports comedies, well, or at I'm, least one. I'm cooking one up for you at the moment, so um, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got an exciting, um, exciting sports comedy that's not too far away. Cool. And that'll be a nice foil to the heavier, um, more sort of challenging drama stuff that we've been working on. Can you say what the sport is? Yeah, competitive sheep shearing. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's kind of like a Blades of Glory, Talladega Nights meet Zoolander sort of number, uh, but based around the sport of competitive sheep shearing. It's called Sharing the Love. <laughs> yeah. So how did you manage to get Cliff Curse involved with the Dark Horse? Well, um, it's a funny one actually. Um, I was sitting at my house one day in um, Piha. It was actually in night time and I got a phone call and uh, it was Cliff Curtis, and he had been passed the script by Tim Oeda Morrison. You know, Tim said, hey, cuz, you know, there's only uh, one actor in New Zealand that can play this role, bro, and that's you. That's you, Cliffy. You're the man for this job, you know. And um, so, yeah, he called me. I thought it was a joke, actually, at first, when he said, um, it's Cliff Curtis here, but it was him. Um, and yeah, so then we just started a sort of series of discussions with him over a few months, actually. James Napier Robertson, um, the writer director, myself, and Cliff. And it was a really thorough and kind of robust process where we all, from our perspective, we knew that the film would very much hang on the casting of that role and the performance of Genesis. Um, and although Cliff is of course an incredibly talented actor. We were unsure whether he was the right fit for Genesis, to be honest, um, to begin with. Knowing the real man ourselves, we sort of had a very clear picture of, of what we wanted this man to be on screen. What gave you that uncertainty? Um, I guess there's the obvious things, um, such as the, the physicality of Cliff. You know, Cliff's, uh, he, he, especially at that time, he was quite a thin, sort of chiseled um, guy. Um, so there was the physical thing, which was an initial blockage, but one that we felt like we could overcome. Um, but also there were certain um, personality traits and qualities to the character that we hadn't seen Cliff bring to the screen before. Um, a real sort of warmth and open heart um, quality that we that was so crucial to Genesis um, you know whereas Cliff a lot of his parts and had um, a lot of his work on screen had been playing sort of darker more villainous uh, characters so we were like does he have um, that in him and it was actually um, James and I sat down and we watched this one scene from Whale Rider um, where he's sitting on the beach with Keisha and um, you know she's crying and talking about how frustrated and how upset she is that her grandfather Rawiri Paritini you know isn't showing her the love that she's desperate for and Cliff was just so tender and loving and amazing in that scene we just kept watching it over and over and over again and we're like yeah you know and yeah so that was sort of the start of the process i guess now the dark horse was only the second feature for um james ralston i keep on saying never yeah, wrong, but, yeah. <laughs> but um coming off of boy yeah it's been a few years since boy how were we able to get the best performance from james yeah, I guess, um, well, that's, you know, credit to James Napier Robertson, really. He worked really hard with James. Um, and even in the auditions, um, you know, 
uh, James Napier Robertson pushed James Rolleston um, very, very hard. So we, we got this incredible audition scene out of James, which as soon as we saw that, watched that back, we were like, this is, he can do it, man. Um, but he's an interesting um, young man. Like, uh, yeah, he's, I think, you know, it's typical for a teenage lad to be a little bit sort of self-conscious and, and self-aware, especially in those vulnerable scenes, those emotional scenes. It's a real tough ask to ask a 16, 17, 18 year old guy to go there. Um, but I thought James blew it out of the park. Um, he was really professional. He was kind of like an all black, you know, he would turn up to set with his big um, Beats by Dre headphones or whatever and get in the zone through the music. Um, and yeah, I'm not exactly sure what his process was in terms of, of going there, but whatever it was, it, um, it worked pretty well. What was the budget of the Dark Horse? Ah, oh, well, you can't kiss and tell too much there, my friend, Liam. Some people have kissed and told us. Really? Wow, they might not get to kiss again, though. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the problem. Um, it was in the vicinity of um, three and a half million dollars, yeah. Yeah, okay. There was one critic, I won't name names, who um, criticised the Deadlands for not having significant Māori presence in the filmmaking department for a movie that is Māori-centric and demonstrating a Māori world. Were you ever concerned about getting a similar sort of backlash for The Dark Horse? Um, it was definitely something that came up at times, um, but I guess the, the thing with our story was, um, you know, we had the approval and endorsement and support of Genesis himself, who the film was about. Um, you know, when I came across him and his story, he was, man, one of the most incredible people that I'd ever come across and I just knew that it was such a cinematic story and so I reached out to him and we started to build uh, quite a strong relationship. Um, so at the end of the day, um, you know, when Jen made the decision for to allow James and I to tell his story, that's enough for me. Um, so, you know, I couldn't get too concerned about any other sort of external opinions about whether we had the right to tell that story because Genesis had passed that on to us and we were grateful for that, so. Mm. Now, I actually have fan mail here for a question specifically for you from my producer, Nick, actually, who's the guy just over there. Get kind of, Nick. He's a sweaty guy who kind of looks like you as well. Um, and he says, Nick writes, is it safe to say, it is safe, sorry, it is safe to say that Four Nights Films has raised the bar? The Dark Horse brought the feeling of spectacle back to New Zealand filmmaking. On a national scale, people were genuinely excited to see this film. What's the next step? Please make more stuff, please. Mm. Oh, that's very kind, man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the thing with Four Nights is um, we've been chipping away. We started at this this company March 2010 um, so we had been chipping away developing a whole slate of projects since then and then everything we loved and the Dark Horse both sort of um, got traction around the same time um, so it was a crazy busy period there um, but I felt like there was we had a really robust and thorough development process preceding those the production on those two films um, but all the while we were also developing a number of other projects. So those projects now are starting to, um, you know, come very close to, to being realized themselves. Um, so one of them is a very different project for us, which is sharing the love. love. Yeah, <laughs> very different. And I'm super excited about that because it'll, it'll be fun. And um, I love the sort of intensity of challenging drama, uh, but, yeah, I, I want to have, have a crack at comedy too, so we've got that and a number of other projects. We've got two films that are shooting this year, um, which Sharing the Love isn't one of those. There's another two pictures shooting as well. So, um, but Let's go back to Everything We Loved. How That got a simultaneous cinema and VOD release. Yeah. How well has that been doing on demand? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. It's done pretty pretty well considering that it's a new thing for New Zealanders to adopt. I mean VOD in general is has not been there hasn't it hasn't become part of the sort of 
um, diet of New Zealanders yet, film, film consuming diet. Um, so considering that, and also that it's an art house film with um, an older skew of audience who are even less used to using um, VOD, I think we've, we've done pretty darn well. But a big thing about, a big part of why we wanted to do it was just to help the industry in a way make that shift towards VOD becoming a feasible um, sort of income stream and part of the sustainable business model for us here in New Zealand because we need it. Yeah, the movie Sunday also took um, the yeah. same approach yeah. as well. Do you see more New Zealand films uh, this year taking the straight to VOD approach? I hope so. Well, I mean, it's not straight to VOD. I mean, the thing is, it's a, it's a day and date model which is very popular in the US and has done really well there for a number of films. Um, I love the model, um, but really it will take buy-in from the exhibitors, from the cinema owners to um, loosen their uh, terms a little bit. Um, so we were, Bill Gosden was cool enough to board our idea of having a day and date release so we could do it with the New Zealand Film Festival. But if we were to go direct to cinema chains, um, they usually have a 90, 120 day exclusive window um, before the film can play on any other platform. Right. So at the moment it's very tough to pull off. Um, but I, I would like to see more films that make sense to be released in that way, released in that way. Mm. We often champion uh, the need for New Zealand filmmakers to tell New Zealand stories. Do you hold a lot of value to this idea? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I'm a sort of strangely patriotic and passionate um, New Zealander, and um, yeah, I've always felt a real pull to towards Māori and Pacific stories as well. Um, yeah, I think that if you look at a lot of the top New Zealand films, um, so many of them have a cultural um, specificity and a cultural uniqueness. Um, a lot of those films also sort of manage to straddle um, that difficult thing where there's also a universality to the story and it's got both of those things. But um, yeah, I guess this is the country um, that I love and these you know, these are my people, man. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I'm super passionate about New Zealand stories and I think, I think it can have great value. I mean, we've seen that with The Dark Horse, just people on the street coming up to us and telling us how much the stories moved them and how close to their own experience it is. And man, that's amazing. Mm. Thank you so much for talking to us, um, Tom Hearn. And um, I consider us friends now. Yeah, yeah. did so. I just uh, only have one more question for you. Yeah. Since you're such a, um, a high profile uh, producer in New Zealand now, it would, would it be pretty easy for you to get your friends into a director's chair? Uh, no, no comment. No comment. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Thanks for Thanks, having Tom. me.